Welcome to A Shot of Rock. I am your host, Alex, and I am here with Brendan and Reed of Never Say Die. Hi. How's it going? What's up? <laughs> How's the tour been so far? It's been amazing. Thank you so much for having us. And uh, Yeah, no, the tour's been really good. We've been out for about uh, six weeks now, yeah. and about a month of that has been with another lost year, which has been a lot of fun. Um, yeah, well, the, all, all six weeks have been fun, but uh, yeah, it's been a blast to be out with another last year. Awesome, and you guys have a new CD, it is in, it is out now, mm -hmm. right? That's right, yeah, it came out in January. Yeah, Destroy and Rebuild. How was the writing process for that? Uh, it took a long time. We spent a long time compiling songs. Uh, there was a lot of time where Reed and I just staying up till 7 a.m. Yeah, at our definitely. friend's place, just using his gear, just trying to make songs. Many right? months, yeah, yeah. just trying to figure out what uh, you know what we wanted to do musically. And uh, and that being said, uh, once we hooked up with Mike Langford, our drummer who produced the record, uh, it came together like it was. Yeah, not very long. We did the first four songs for the record like within a week and a half or two weeks or something and then uh, you know obviously improved on stuff and kept tweaking things over the course of the next six or eight months mm -hmm. but it's uh, like the songs themselves were pretty together pretty quickly mm -hmm. so it's just about selecting the songs that out of the body of work we had that mm -hmm. sort of fit together but that it only took a couple years after after my darkest days it yeah, yeah it's been a few it, years it since we've been out playing years. this like rock music like this right. and it, it took a while but yeah once once Langford kind of got in the mix things got together really fast yeah so. right Definitely. It helps when you have the other members in the band too. Mm -hmm. to well, yeah, and someone yes. and someone that's because we're kind of self contained because he produced it, so we just recorded right. it yeah. like all ourselves. It's, Everything was done within our team, right? So yeah. it's lucky yeah. when you can be in a band where everybody's a heavy lifter. Like right. everybody can, you know, has the capacity to do work that you know. And just some bands have one guy in that band that you know, uh, you know, shows up for work at nine a.m. or whatever, you know, so to speak, and, and mm -hmm. gets makes the phone calls and does the. Uh, does what they need to do, but we're fortunate to be in a position where everybody in this band works really, really hard and, you know, has a lot to bring to the table. How did you find the other two members? Um, just uh, being in bands, like Brennan and I both played in a bunch of different bands after My Darkest Days, just kind of like, you know, gigging and stuff and having fun and playing mm -hmm. shows, and uh, I met Mike and, um, and Dane playing in a different band, and uh, we just kind of wrote a lot of material together really fast, and we really liked playing together, and so this opportunity kind of came up. Um, and we just went from there. Did you use a lot of stuff that you wrote on the road with My Darkest Days? Because I know yes. you were always writing. Yeah, yeah we I would definitely we wrote a lot of stuff. Writing. We definitely farmed all those <laughs> ideas. And, and oh, it, yeah. yeah, in the years between then, right, too, because we didn't get to put out a third record, so there was a lot of right. stuff that we mm -hmm. wrote and then never did anything with. And you're so like, so mine now. Yeah, that, exactly. was, that was kind of the start. It's nothing that we used on the record, I don't think, but, oh no, automatic. Was from uh, that period. Yeah, that was from back then. We yeah. didn't write that on the road per se. I wonder if there is anything that uh, was specifically for. But yeah, it used to come down to like a uh, Reed and I sitting in the bandwagon while we were rolling a night in the front lounge. <laughs> we'd be on either couch with laptops mm -hmm. set up, and I'd like this big MIDI keyboard that would be leaning up against the counter because you couldn't set it down anywhere. Right? We're like, yeah. <laughs> you know what? The ballad in the pile of songs for the LP too. Oh uh, yeah, that's from back then. That's from back then. <laughs> that's <laughs> right. So there you go. Yeah. There's a couple. Of, I think Rearview Mirror is very, very old too. That was that's right. 2014 or something. That one and uh, and some other songs that didn't make the record, but were also pretty cool. Nice. Um, i You have all of the songs on YouTube. Yeah. Why did you decide to do that? Um. It's the internet. <laughs> Why would you not? Because they're going to be put there anyways. Exactly. So I'd so rather put it in one spot that's run by us that gets all the plays. Up, there you go. At least you get something from it. Yeah. I forget. It's <laughs> a good know, way to do it. Kid in Arkansas is going to put it on the internet anyway. We might as well put it on yeah, the internet. Yeah, it's true. That always happens. I see that so often. Who cares? All the time. If you, if, you know, our feeling is this. Like, if you want to listen to the, the record and you don't want to pay any money for it, do that. That's great. It's 2017. Like... You know, we get it. Yeah, uh, we're going to do it anyway. If you want to support the band, you're going to support the band, and, and we're super grateful for that. If you want to listen to the band, we're grateful for that, too. Like, at the end of the day, if we're able to make music that affects somebody, mm -hmm. like, that's what I want to do. I don't... Right. I didn't get into music to, to make millions of dollars or be famous or anything, which obviously I'm not, so... <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, if that is a consequence of doing what you love or doing the art that you do, that's great, but... I, I care about making art. Yeah. That's why I attempt to take pretty pictures of things. Exactly. Um, <laughs> yeah. You guys do a lot of Facebook Live stuff where you interact with fans. 
yeah. um, doing van jams, acoustic so stuff. Much. Why did you decide to do that? Um, because you guys kind of just kind of went, boop, we're doing music. Yeah, you know, um, music. Well, we like found that uh, it was a good way to reach people who are fans of My Darkest Days by just kind of going and playing My Darkest Days songs on acoustic guitars together uh, and, um, you know, playing our stuff in between those songs as much as we mm -hmm. could to get people engaged with uh, with what we're doing. To and there's a certain the danger with doing it live, too, on Facebook. Yeah, it's super right. fun. Right. To just be able to press a button and talk to, like, thousands of people is yeah. Yeah. cool. Like, yeah. yeah, that's something that's kind of fun about that. It's like playing a show, but... Yeah. yeah, like there have been days where we're just like off and in our van and we press, you know, live and then we've played to sang to thousands of people from just like our van. It's, yeah. Like, yeah. it's incredible. So we definitely try to capitalize on that and you know, spread yeah. the word. Do you ever just, do you plan some of the stuff or you just go, fuck it, let's no, do it? No, yeah, we've, we've never planned anything. <laughs> we like, they get mad at me because I just start doing it and they'll be like, we don't know what we're doing! Like, what song are we playing? Or he calls Whatever. songs and just starts doing it like a different key. So I have to like sit there and like, ear train and like listen. I'm like, okay, I think it's this one. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, and it goes bad sometimes. <laughs> But that's no, part of that's part of the danger, sort yeah, of the yeah. part of the allure of it, I suppose. Right? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. I mean, whatever, you know. Like, I just to try and do it really well every time, but to just, you know, yeah. If there's if it's yeah. not spontaneous, there's no point in doing it. Yeah, it's more. I mean, I, I see the yeah, like the scheduled live things, and it's like that's cool, I guess. But that's like, it's not for us. Yeah. You know. I, I mean, there are some people that are maybe just like, please tell us what time you're doing it on a regular basis. Maybe, maybe at some point we'll get more organized with it and it will just become more but, of a production and then eventually yeah, it'll just be I like mean, be this nice. super plain love, like a live, a Facebook live studio like this where we're like all right. perfectly set up. It'd but that's all like, I'll still go on and just turn on my phone and sing to the internet at, at random. <laughs> that's not okay. Even if we had like a big schedule like Friday, we put out like a live thing in production mm -hmm. and we played for half an hour. Even if we had something like that, I would still be like in Denny's and just like, you guys want to eat enchiladas with us or whatever? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, serve enchiladas at Denny's, but... <laughs> okay, a Mexican restaurant. Yeah, yeah. Mexican <laughs> restaurant. Always yeah. tacos. Yeah. The answer is always tacos. It's true. Um, <laughs> all right, random ass question time. First album you ever purchased? First album I ever purchased was Clumsy by Our Lady Peace. Blur. The one with song two on it. So the one with <laughs> song two on it. Yeah, I just remember that very clearly, buying that album, and then being That's like, insane. I bought an album for one song. <laughs> and everyone's like, welcome to buying CDs! I'm like, right. <laughs> yeah. They had coffee and TV on that one, too. There was some good songs on that, the other ones, but I don't remember them. Though. I just remember that one song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one song you wish you wrote. Um, hmm. Killing in the Name of By Rage, when I was a yes. kid. And yeah. I heard that for the first time, I was like, I wish I wrote that. <laughs> I re literally remember saying that to my mother, and she's like, oh, you mean the one that swears for like the last minute of the song? I'm like, yeah, that one. Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah. It's a great song. Yeah. <laughs> um, smells like Teen Spirit. Yeah. Nice. When I was a kid. I mean, now I'd probably be like Deftone Song, I guess, but... Or, uh... Have you seen The Butcher? Yeah. I wish I wrote that song. <laughs> That's a bad impression. Um, yeah, no, there's definitely lots of songs where I hear and I'm like, oh, Amazing. I never have like a. I don't know if I ever like wish I wrote something, but so much as I just like really, really, really yes, like something. Yes, any Depeche Mode song, probably. Yeah, any Depeche Mode song. Most of them. Mm -hmm. Some of them are really dated sounding, and I get yeah. it. But most of them are, yeah, super. I love Depeche Mode. I asked another last year, what is your biggest pet peeve? Pet peeve, if I could speak today. My great. biggest pet peeve. <laughs> uh, I don't have pet peeves. Nothing. Nothing bothers me. Yeah. Not just everything bothers Reed all just equally. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, I'm just like, I, I don't have pet peeves. I just like, um, just broken chemicals in my brain. There you so go. Sometimes <laughs> I just snap. There's no, it's not like, um, it's, there's no rhyme or reason. I just, yeah. Nice. Yeah. That's worse. I don't know if I can do pet peeves. <laughs> I'm pretty, I'm pretty easy going. Yeah. No, yeah. Brennan does not have any pet peeves. That's good. Um, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm pretty, actually, no, like, you can, if you slow, crappy slow. driving, people around me driving, because, like, the amount of yeah. times that someone, like, almost, like, turns into me, I don't like that, because that stressed me out, <laughs> but that's about it, that's about it. There you go, um, yeah, you should ask them what their biggest pet peeves were, because it almost started a fight. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, because, um. Adam, Adam doesn't like it when they squish the bread. The oh. loaf of bread. doesn't like it when they squish the bread. We yeah, didn't talk about that, we talked about, um. Bad grammar, and then they started yeah. talking to him with bad grammar, 
and he's and I'm like I swear he was gonna punch one of them in the face. <laughs> <laughs> and That's then grammar. yeah, no, it that was funny. And and that should so be bad. like a Canadian thing. Remember, like the movie Canadian Bacon. John Candy and the other guy, oh. they, they get away from the, the Mounties because they get the Mounties arguing about grammar. They're like, actually, it's the noun. And, uh, they start going through and then they look around and they're like, oh, they're gone. Crap. So that's, that's supposed to be like a Canadian thing you make fun of. Before. True. No, apparently not. Apparently not. <laughs> apparently not. All right. Best concert you've ever been to? Oh, uh, wow. Okay. Hold on. There's so many good ones, it's like... Ozfest 2001. I saw Slipknot at like 4 p.m. Yeah, and I was standing, and I didn't even know who Slipknot was. I was like 16. Right. Right. And I went up to the front of the stage, and I think it was Mudvayne was playing across, and they were small too, and I loved them. But I ran and got to the front, and everyone's like, "Oh, let's go! You gotta go see this band." And I was standing right in front of the clown guy, and I had like a backpack on. And as soon as they started playing, it was just like chaos. And they did the thing where he's like, "Everyone, get down! Get out yeah. on your knees!" And they and they want you to jump. I just remember being Very like, spit it I'm out. "Like, I'm gonna die." I'm yeah, freaking die because I had a backpack on and people were like grabbing it, oh. like throwing me around. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. Yeah. yeah, I saw them. They did their first home show in seven years. We had people fl- flying in from Ireland and all these places to go see it. I was in the third row. Um, the entire show except for like three songs. Right. But I'm like, I am not leaving this floor until I fucking hear spit it out and I get down on my knees and jump the fuck up. I am doing this shit. So I lasted the entire time. My friends ditched. And I... stayed in. Yeah. And I made it. And I'm like, fuck yes! (laughs) It was a good time. But yeah, that was probably my... That, just because it was some, uh, some, something that I discovered, I ended up loving Slipknot mm-hmm. in that whole first album, but yeah. I'd like never heard of it, let alone seen them live. I right. saw it, I was like, what the hell just happened? Yeah. It was like, a, I remember thinking and like watching them, I'm just like, it's like this like crazy nightmare that's like coming to life on stage, right? It so is. I just remember it impacted me a lot, and I ended up loving that record. Mm-hmm. System of a Down. When we played System of a Down. Oh, yeah? Nice. At um, Donington. Yeah. At uh, were, Download Fest in England. Bands mm-hmm. them, so. Yeah. And it was raining like crazy. And we were nicely intoxicated standing up in the rain. The British. <laughs> crazy. All right. But that was after, they hadn't played in a long time as well. Yeah. That was like the, they, I don't think there'd been a System of Down show in a long time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was cool. It's like 2011. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, weirdest thing you've ever been asked to sign? Uh, a baby. Yeah, we signed a baby. <laughs> we were at a state fair, and this person of course it was a state walked fair. up. It was, I signed her diaper. Yeah, the diaper and the, the baby. And the baby was like crying and didn't want it at all. Yeah, and they're like, sign my baby. And I was like, whoa. I remember coming back, and we're like, we Straight just signed a baby. Not on the actual baby That's skin, right. it was a diaper. I felt, I felt wrong. I was trying oh, yeah. to know. That was I tried not to get good. Not that actually. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on then. Yeah. <laughs> what is your pre-show ritual? Um, right, I, I warm up. Um, I steam. I inhale steam a lot, um, and then do a you know varying Matt or yeah former singer Matt um, mm-hmm. just sent me a new vocal warm up to do, so I do that one now. But we had an older one that we did for many years. Nice. And uh, you know, vape a little bit. I like listening to Audio Stretch. Slave. Yeah, we specifically do. Audio Slave because it's just like to get right before up. we yeah. go on, listen to something really loud that we like a lot. Like show me how to live or whatever. I like to have a cocktail. Yeah. Yeah. We, we tend to have, like a, have a beer. An have a beer. <laughs> yeah. Perhaps a beer. Yeah. Like a beverage. I've only ever drank one beer my entire life. One beer. Yeah, you either. I had more beer. It's than either, you see, you, either you're a beer drinker or you're not. Nope. It's just there's no two ways about it, right? Just drink also, one. Never nothing. again. Never again. Nope. So what do you drink then? If you do. Um, you white do drink, Russians. White Russians. Or booze. I had um, Crown Royal Apple for the first time the other day, and holy shit, that. Sh- I drink that straight. Oh yeah. No. It sounds like a hangover though. It sounds like a lot of sugar. Yeah. Probably. See, I can't do that stuff. I can't do that stuff. <laughs> okay. Last question. What is one piece of advice you would give other bands? Other bands? Wait, we were talking about like bands right. starting out or just like other bands? Just or Doesn't just... matter, bands starting out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean I, I the advice I would give to uh, somebody who wants to, to play in a band or somebody who wants to start a band, I would say you should write songs because you can come up with, you know, because many bands fail. Uh, so I think that 
if you abolish that from your way of thinking and don't think about failure so much as thinking about making good music, um, you know, I think you'll be okay. Because if you write a song as good as like, you know, Passengers Let Her, Let Her Go or whatever, or mm -hmm. uh, you know, Hey There Delilah or something, or a, you know, whatever, like, you know, like a Shinedown song or something, or yeah. you write Feed the Machine, um, and you're at home in your basement, like, you're gonna be okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that song, if you put that song out, you don't have to record it very well. You can pretty much sing that onto the internet. And if it's your song and it's really, really good, mm -hmm. people will listen to it because it's really, really good. And then they'll find you. That's what I believe anyway. That's what I'm trying to do. As much as like, <laughs> obviously, you know, it's, there's more to it than that. But if you, if you can make good songs, then I think that you're, even if you don't, you know, be a huge rock star, you're still going to be satisfied with yourself because you're writing good music. Uh, use a metronome, practice to a metronome, and use a tuner. I had a teacher when I was a kid that was ruthless and made me, he would make me tune my bass guitar and and he would make me learn songs and lift the bass lines exactly, exactly what the people, he's like, who do you want to play like? And we'd take that player and we'd go through a whole album. And he, I love Cliff Burton, like Metallica. So he, we went through the whole Kill 'em All record and he made me sit there and first of all tune and play to a metronome and like and then learn exactly what those people would do and i i'm really glad he did that because at the time it sucked because it was like a it was like more homework basically right but it was but now i'm just like yes thanks tom <laughs> thanks okay. so much for having us yeah, yeah thank you no Appreciate problem it. all right that's it for shadow rock i'm your host alex this has been my interview with never say die and we'll see you at the rock show <laughs>